Hello, and welcome to the second episode in this tutorial series showing how to build a simple discus launch glider. In this episode, we will see how to construct the fuselage. As you may remember, the aircraft we are building in this series is a simplified version of the one you see here. Last time, we left off after having finished the wings. We will now continue the build by seeing what tools and materials are necessary to construct the fuselage. You'll first want to have all the tools that we used in the last tutorial. Again, you'll need your CA glue, for which I've chosen Loctite Medium Viscosity, along with your CA Accelerant, for which I'm using BSI Accelerant. You also might want a dropper to apply the accelerant. You'll then need your X-Acto knife and your pen, as we used last time, along with some masking tape this time, because we'll be taping down templates. A triangle is also a handy thing to have, for checking that all the right angles really are 90 degrees. And of course, we'll need what goes inside the fuselage, the servos. We'll be using two 2.5 gram servos. And most importantly, you'll need this plan. This shows all the fuselage parts in actual size, so download the PDF in the video description, print it out, and use it to build along with me. That said, let's get right into the build process. You'll first need to cut out the outlines of the pieces in the plan to create your templates. In my case, I have a wooden set of templates, but both wooden and paper templates will serve the same function. We'll now take our pen and some 3 32nd inch thick balsa wood and begin marking out the parts on the balsa wood using the templates. As you begin marking out these parts, you may notice that the aft section top part, as it's called in the plans, is rather long. It's a cross grain piece, and so it probably won't fit on most 3 32nd inch thick balsa wood sheets. My solution to this was to cut out the part in two separate sections, gluing them together afterwards. This worked pretty well, and as you'll see in a bit here, I'll show how I glued them together. However, any old solution you could think of to address this issue would work just fine. As you can see, I have now finished marking out all the parts on the balsa wood. I'll now move on to the next step in which I'll cut them out using my triangle, my straight edge, and my X-Acto knife. It is very crucial that you use the triangle to make sure every 90 degree cut you make truly is a right angled cut. It's also of course pretty important that you use that straight edge to make sure every cut you make is nice and straight. This next step is rather short and simple. You see the side and bottom plates look strikingly similar, so I'm just writing S or B on them, respectively, to make sure I don't get them mixed up. We will now take our sanding block and do a few light passes on the straight edges of all the parts to make sure the straight edges really are straight. And as you can see, I really am taking my time with this step, because sanding hastily and with much pressure can often result in accidentally rounding off flat edges. Here we see those two sections of the aft top part which I was talking about. You see they fit together pretty nicely here, so I'm just going to get my CA glue and put a paper towel underneath to make sure I don't get any glue on the table. I'll then simply glue the parts together using my triangle to provide a straight reference. Now, as we can clearly see, the fuselage components are all finished and ready to be assembled. We'll now take one side plate and one bottom plate. We'll assemble them such that the side plate is on top of the bottom plate in that configuration you see there. So now we'll take our CA glue, put a paper towel down, and simply assemble those parts. There, as you can see, is the finished product. We'll now take the other side plate and assemble it to the bottom plate in a similar fashion. Here, I'm taking my CA accelerant along with the dropper and putting a little bit of accelerant into that glue joint. And here, as you can see, is the finished assembly of the two side plates onto the one bottom plate. We'll now look at the two nose pieces. You'll see I've cut them about a millimeter larger than their outlines, which allows me to sand them down very precisely to their actual shape. I'm also sanding an inward angle on the flat sections of both pieces such that they can point together to make that pointy nose shape. Here you can see that inward angle or taper that we're going for. Now, you'll also have to sand inward angles on the tips of the nose pieces such that they fit together like you see here. Now, once all that sanding is done, you can simply get out your glue, put down a paper towel like you see here, and glue the bits together. Here I'm using my knife to remove some more material and make those parts fit. You'll now use your sanding block along both nose pieces to make sure that they're level with one another. Once you've made sure that the nose side plates are nice and level with one another, you can take those triangles, the top and bottom plates of the nose section, and glue them into place. 
You'll notice your fuselage now has many sharp edges, so quickly round them off using your sanding block as you see here. We'll now use the sanding block to sand inward angles onto the flat sections of the aft side plates, such that they taper back similar to how the nose pieces tapered forward. It's now time to use that wing we made in the last episode to check that it fits through the airfoil sections of the aft side plates. This essentially involves just a lot of testing, fitting, sanding, and repeating. We'll now simply glue the sides of the aft section to the sides of the center section, as you see I'm doing here. Careful in this step that you do not adhere the tips of the aft sections as we did with the nose sections. Those must be apart slightly, such that they fit the tail boom later. As you can see here, again I'm using my accelerant, and simply putting a little bit along these glue joints to make everything set nicely. For the next step, we'll need the bottom plate of the aft section. As you can see here, I've assembled the aft section sides such that a little 32nd of an inch lip is left where they meet the bottom plate. That allows for a little place where the aft section seems to fit right in. You may be able to see that here. Aside from that, this assembly is pretty straightforward and just like the others. Once I'm done gluing, I take the sanding block and simply round off the edges. Here's a bit of a close-up view just to give you an idea of how much I really am sanding these contours. For this next step, you'll need a carbon fiber tube, such as the one I have here, to use for the tail boom. You'll first want to check to make sure that the tail boom fits the aperture that you've left at the end of your fuselage. As you can see, mine fits pretty nicely here. But of course, the angle's going to be all wrong, so you'll need something to remedy that. For that, you'll need the tail boom mount. Now there is a picture of it on the plans, and you can cut it out as per the plans if you wish, but really all it is is a wedge made of some one quarter inch thick balsa wood, and the precise size of it will vary greatly depending on the specifics of how you've put your fuselage parts together. So I recommend cutting out any old wedge shape that's around the right size, and then sanding and filing it down until it gets right to the size you need. And what that precise size is will be dictated by whatever angle your tail boom needs to sit at in order to be level with the cord line of your wing. After sanding and cutting the tail boom mount down to size, we'll then glue it into place. As you can see, putting the tail boom along the mount, it rests just in line with the rest of the fuselage and the wing cord. We will now check to make sure that the wing fits through both airfoil sections in the aft section of the fuselage, as you see I'm doing here. The main goal here is to make sure that the wing fits in the airfoil sections, and the tail boom fits snugly right under it. You should aim to build your tail boom mount such that the tail boom rests a little higher than the underside of the wing when the wing is put in place. That way you can use a round sandpaper, as you see I'm doing here, to sand a little track into the tail boom mount where your rounded tail boom can rest nicely. That'll provide more gluing surface and make things more sturdy. As you can see, I have now glued the tail boom into place, which I have done off camera to make sure I could do it precisely and take my time. And as you can clearly see, the tail boom fits very nicely in all the ways it must fit. I'll now check to make sure the wing fits above it, and it does. And now I'll go off camera to glue the wing into place. But before I glue things up for once and for all, quick tip when you're gluing. Remember the wing we made has a straight trailing edge, so you can use your triangle to make sure it's right angled to the tail boom. As you can see here, I've now glued the wing to the fuselage. Now I'll take that funky cross grain part that we had to cut in two sections and glue it over the top of the whole structure to complete the box-like shape. I'll now take my sanding block to smoothen off those sharp edges that were created when I glued up those two 90 degree corners. It's now time to choose what receiver you're going to use. You'll take that receiver and make a pen mark one receiver length back from the beginning of the center section of the fuselage. You'll see I'm doing that here. I'll now remove my 2.5 gram Emacs servo from its packaging. I'll take out the one-armed, four-hold servo arm, and I'll attach that to the servo head at pretty much center. If you're following along now, you're probably currently finding with some astonishment that your servo doesn't fit in the fuselage you just made. Well, that's because we're going to have to remove the bottom part of the servo. If you now check the fit of your servo, you may find with more astonishment that it still does not fit. Well, that's because we'll have to shorten that servo arm. We don't need all that leverage anyway. So go grab a pair of scissors and cut off the outermost hole of the servo arm. That'll remove a few millimeters of length and allow the servo, I hope, to fit right in there nicely. 
We'll now use our sandpaper to sand the back of the servo to roughen it up and prepare it to be glued to the fuselage. Then we'll make sure we have our pen mark in mind and we'll glue the servo right there. That'll give just enough room in front of the servo to fit our receiver. As you can see here, I'm using the tip of my X-Acto knife blade to get into the fuselage where my fingers can't reach and hold the servo into place while the glue cures. Here you can see I've done the same things to the other servo and attached it to the fuselage in the same fashion. I've left about a square of area in between the two servo heads so that they can both move at about 45 degrees without touching each other. In my experience, that's just about as much throw as we need. I'll then tuck the wires into the fuselage and I'll take that other bottom plate, the top plate if you will, and I'll put some tape on it and tape it into place as my openable hatch. And congratulations! With that step, you'll have yourself a finished wing and fuselage assembly. Well, that's everything we'll be covering in this tutorial. In the next episode, we'll look at making the tails, installing them, and setting up the spring and string linkages for the servos to operate the controls. I hope this tutorial was understandable, enjoyable, and offered some insight. Until next time, thanks for watching!